Yeah, welcome back. So what if we want to what, what, what if we want to start storing um, this information in memory? We're not going to save it in a database yet. That'll be later. But what if we want to store an informa uh, the information inside some kind of list so that we can print out all employees after we've created a few of them? Um, let's just have a look at two different ways we can do that. Now, the first one is to use there are two different things here. We have an array and we have a list which are the most used uh, guys here when we talk about um, the C sharp environment. Let me just make both of them here right away then we can talk about the differences. Employees as list. There we go. Oh, well, I'm missing an S here. There we go. And um, the top one, the array is very very cool if you know the size of your list up front. If you know how big it's supposed to be as soon as you create it, why use more space in memory than is actually required. So what we're doing here, when you make an, an employee array, the top one here, let me just show you a way to do comments real quickly. I just front uh, forward slash three times and it makes a summary. Array uh, needs to know its size up front. So that's kind of the the back side of the coin, that is that it needs to know how big it should be as soon as you create it, right? So, and if you wanted to then make it bigger, you could later say, okay, then I want to um, to recreate the array just bigger. So you could, you could go and overwrite the array with a new array that has more space. Now that's kind of annoying when we have like this, an employee set that could grow and grow and grow. And I do not know how many employees I want to add. I do not know that it is exactly 10 employees. I might just keep putting employees into my array, right? And then I will have to ask the system every time I reach a maximum level to take the current away and add new stuff to it. And that was the old way we did it. That was how we did it. We had to say, okay, now the array is full, so take everything from the current array, copy it into a new bigger array, right? And that's what we had to do every time. But the list, the list is dynamic. So you can just keep adding and adding and adding. And when it reaches a limit behind the scenes, it'll do that. It'll extend the array, make it bigger, make it, uh, give it more room for you to just add again. So you will never have to take care of it yourself. So that's the difference. Now, when you make a list, you have to use the list keyword, and then you have to specify what you can put inside the list. Okay, like here we are explaining the array is going to be filled with employees, the list is going to be filled with employees. So that's the two different ways of explaining what can we put in. That could also be strings, int, um, customer, whatever you want it could be in here. But you need to specify it here and here what you're going to add to the list. So let's just do one more thing before we end this video. Let's try and add the employee instead. Let's try to add him inside the list. And I want to use the list. So I'll say employee as list, go add. So then there's an add function that you can actually send in your new employee here. Okay, so now I can add this guy down here. Awesome, so now I have the employee added and I'll just make another little function here. Uh, public void print all, we'll get back to this function. I just want to see it working. Print all employees. Uh, it'll be like this. And now I'll use a for loop. Don't worry, we'll get back to that. For each, and I'll, um, I'll tap. And here I'm going to say I want to go through the list called employees list. And then I just want to print each item. Console, console lock, and then it's going to be item. That one I will explain to you. I'm just going to try and show you um, in the program that everything is actually running. So when I click this guy, show all employees, then I want to execute that code from the employee manager to show all the actual employees. Good, and then I just want to add a new guy here that says show all employees. Because now it should actually, actually start showing everybody. There we go. Let's try and run this again, just to show you that that is running. And next time I will explain the second keyword. I just want to see if it actually, if we can start creating multiple employees as it is right now. So I want to create an employee. So I'll type his email, enter, he's been created. What do you want to do? Well, I want to add another employee. Uh, let's call him Jimmy, uh, there we go. Okay, what do you want to do? Well, I want to show all the employees. There we go. We've shown the first one and we've shown the second one. 
So now we actually have a running application. We can say zero, I don't want to do anymore. Application is done. But everything I wrote is gone now because we're only hiding, we're only saving stuff in memory. That's for later, we'll start saving it in a database instead. But now, every time you shut your program down, employees are gone. So don't start writing your entire employee set, shut it down, because then you've lost everything. So next video, I'll try and explain option two here. See you next time.